It's a common technique for a handwriting or lettering animation to draw a mask pad over the text. But imagine, the text is made up of single line strokes. So much more will be possible. When I create a write-on effect on non-handwriting typefaces, I always want a precise stroke to get as close as possible to the original font I want to reveal. I figured out that monoline typefaces are just begging to get animated like this, but not script fonts, rather sans serif. Better, rounded. Even better, a stenciled and rounded monoline sans serif font. But still, it requires a perfectly centered path that would be tedious to draw by hand to match the font precisely. Because create shapes from text only gives you outlines instead of single paths, no matter how thin your font is. In Illustrator, there is a fast method to convert fonts into real single line paths. But here, you should use very thin hairline fonts. The thicker the font, the more inaccurate the result. Besides, I don't like switching back and forth between applications. In this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you a basic technique to create single lines from text that you can treat like any other shape layer stroke to animate something like this, or this, or even this. I've picked out some really beautiful free fonts that I've thoroughly tested to ensure that the single line typefaces you'll be creating will be almost identical to the original font. You can also download my free After Effects project file with animation examples of my recommended typefaces plus the animations you've seen in the intro. Everything created with this simple technique and of course without any plugins. Let's jump right into After Effects. As I mentioned in the intro, a rounded stencil font like the Rosca typeface causes us the least trouble. Here we have separated lines that have a constant width from start to end, not branching out into other lines which would be normally the case in the letters E and R. And what's really beneficial is that the letters P and R aren't closed shapes as they usually are, but they have gaps here. Right-click on the text and select Create Shapes from Text, which creates a new shape layer with the text converted into multiple paths. The original text layer is still here, but turned off automatically. Open each shape layer group and delete Merge Paths, Fill and Stroke. Instead, we're gonna insert just one single stroke operator that applies to all groups. Select Contents to make sure that no shape layer group is selected. Click on the Add button and select Stroke. This adds a stroke operator below the shape layer groups. Set the stroke width to 1 pixel and any color you like. Then set Line Cap to Round Cap and Line Join to Round Join. As you can see here, Create Shapes from Text only gives you the outlines of the letter shapes. This is not what we want. We want a path that runs in the center of the shape. And here is my trick. Add an offset operator and decrease the amount until the path seems to be in the center. When you see the paths disappear, the value might be too low. To find the perfect value, decrease the offset amount in steps of 0, 0,1 until the path or parts of the path start to disappear. Then you'll know that the value before is the value you're looking for. Cut the offset operator by pressing Ctrl X or Command X on a Mac and paste it into each shape layer group. This almost seems to look like a single path. But when we zoom in, we can see that they are still outlines, but shrinked. To make sure that the path doesn't self-overlap, open the first shape layer group and add a trim paths operator into it. Decrease the end value until it's a single line. In this case, it's 50% because it's half the pathway we have to trim. Copy the trim operator and paste it into the other shape layer groups. Here you can see that it didn't quite work well in the letters P and R. And here is how we fix it. Open the P group, add an empty group into it and duplicate it. Then put the shape and question into one group, the other shapes into the other. Then cut offset and trim and paste them into the subgroups. 
It is just this path that steps out of line. So open up the according subgroup, open the trim paths operator and change offset until it looks right for you. Same procedure with the letter R. Add an empty group, duplicate it, put the affected path into one group, the remaining ones into the other, cut offset and trim, paste them into each group and adjust the trim offset value. Now we can increase the width of the strokes until they fill out the original outlines. Looks almost like the original, but now it's a true single path font. To make it more obvious, we can add another trim paths operator and animate the end value. Just to make it look a bit more pleasant, we can duplicate the shape layer two times, stagger the layers and give each stroke a different color. And here you go. We have just created and animated a single path text in After Effects only. Let's move on to the next example. Monde X. It's French, means world X, doesn't have any meaning. It's just because it contains some interesting shapes to show you what little challenges you might encounter and how to easily solve them. I chose the BC Alpha Pipe font here. It is also a rounded monoline typeface. Contrary to the stencil font, we now have a line that branches out. We also have a closed shape like the letter O. The letter D is also closed and has two overlapping shapes, a circle and a line. The letter X also consists of two lines intersecting each other. So how do we deal with that? I've already converted the text into shapes and offset the path. The only thing I didn't do is to delete the merge paths operators in the letters O and D. This is because of the closed shapes. When we have a closer look at the paths, we can see that the lines are not overlapping completely after the offset, probably because the width of the original font is not 100% consistent, which we cannot see with a bare eye. But in this case, it's tolerable. Okay, let's take on the letter M and trim the path to get rid of the overlapping lines. When I decrease the end value, the trim is not continuous. To fix this, you can try to decrease the offset paths amount. As you can see, it worked well here. To find the perfect end value, you can again approach it via trial and error. Sometimes you have to adjust the start value as well to get rid of the remnants. The trim value is not exactly 50% here like in the previous font example, because the overlapping lines are not congruent. The letter O is fairly easy. The only thing you have to do is change the merge paths mode to add. No trimming needed. The letter N also doesn't have any pitfalls, except that it has little remnants at the start and end. So let's cut them away. Now let's take a look at the letter D, consisting of a circle and a line. And a fast solution would be to create two different paths for it. To do this, create an empty group and put everything into it, including the offset and trim paths operator. Then trim the path until just the circle is left over. Next, duplicate the whole group and trim the path until you just get the vertical line. Again, refine the line if necessary. By the way, you could separate the letter M into two shapes as well, because this part is self-overlapping. But I think it's okay, it's just this short part. There is also the brute force method to separate the shapes, which I want to demonstrate on the letter X. I'm gonna create an empty group, throw everything into it and duplicate the group. Then I'm gonna delete some path points to get the shapes I want. Same with the path in the other group. Now I can adjust the offset individually. And because the line self overlaps 100%, the end values of the trim operators are exactly 50%. The letter E shouldn't be a problem as well, 
but like in the letter M, the trim just starts midway. So I'm gonna adjust the offset to make it start from the right position. Now increase the stroke width until it reaches the thickness of the original font. This looks okay now, but there are significant gaps here. What can we do? We can toggle on the original text and give it another color to see the difference between the two layers. Then we can go from letter to letter and adjust the paths to lower the differences. You don't have to tweak a lot, because basically the path is already correct, more or less. When we zoom back, we can still see the text layer below a little bit, but I think it's something we can tolerate as long as the trim animation looks right. And it looks right. Now, here's the trickiest scenario using a sensory font, like Ubuntu, with a but instead of a round cap. This is the result of the technique used so far. And it's obvious that it's not congruent with the original typeface. Most endings aren't covered by the stroke. This wouldn't be a problem if you used round caps. But the stroke, set to butt cap, doesn't reach the end. And there is also a little problem when you see it animated. It looks quite jagged when the stroke of the letter N wants to move around the corner. What's the solution? We can improve the result by changing line cap to projecting cap. Which means that the endings are extended by the half of the current stroke width. But still, there are some big differences here. This is because Ubuntu looks like a monoline typeface, but actually it has a varying font width. In this case, it's even easier to fix than in the example before. Increase the stroke width to exceed the outlines of the original font and use it as an alpha mat for the original text layer. But here we can see that the join is protruding a bit. To fix this, just decrease the stroke width. Animation looks good. Okay, that's it guys. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me anything in the comments below. See you next time. Yeah.